This video is going to show you how to go from footage quality like this to footage quality like this. How do you turn your DSLR or mirrorless camera into a high quality webcam for streaming? Let's get into it. Okay, so in 2020, there are going to be more and more and more streamers. Not only are there more streamers, but there are more streaming platforms. Competition is truly starting to heat up. So if you want to get into the streaming game, you need to find ways to differentiate your stream from others. Now, before we get into this video, my big caveats are audio quality is way more important than video quality. So go and get that sorted first if you haven't and lighting is probably more important than a camera upgrade. High quality video that's badly lit still looks bad. Now, if you've got both of those things sorted, then a camera upgrade moving up from a webcam like the Logitech C920 or the Logitech Brio, if you've sunk a bit more cash into it, an upgrade to a DSLR or mirrorless camera is gonna make a substantial difference to your video quality particularly if you've got head and shoulder shots that fill the entire frame, maybe some intros, outros, or maybe you like to chat, fancy doing some vlogs, just want to engage with your audience in a way that is different than a small square in the bottom left, right, top left, top right corner of your screen. So things that you're going to need. Now, clearly you'll need a DSLR or mirrorless camera. Now, mirrorless cameras are a little easier because they're typically slightly smaller. The Sony Alpha series, kind of the 63, 64, 65, 6600 cameras, I think are ideal. They're very compact and small. Uh, you're gonna need a capture card of some description. Now, capturing 1080p is gonna be more than adequate, not many people are streaming. Above that, indeed, not many people are able to receive that. So why you'd want to go higher than that, I don't know. A myriad of different options available from Elgato, all the way from the Camlink, which is a nice dedicated dongle just for plugging your camera in. No kind of pass through on the HDMI. Um, or if you've already got a capture card, um, if you were capturing your Xbox or your PlayStation and you no longer need to do that, using one of those is fine as well. Now the Logitech Brio webcam that I've been capturing some of the initial footage on, this is not a cheap webcam. This is about $170 at the time of making this video. It's capable of 4K at 30 frames per second, 1080p at 60 frames per second, but its sensor size is still very, very small, and that's gonna mean poor low light performance. It's also gonna introduce a whole heap of grain into your videos, making them not look very pleasant at all. Now, an upgrade to a mirrorless or DSLR, it's gonna have a substantially bigger sensor size, which is really gonna help with those things. It's also gonna have better dynamic range, Basically, that means it's better at being able to pick up quite bright parts of the image, contrasted against quite dark parts. Webcams are notoriously terrible at doing this. And it should be noted that you must make sure that your camera will display a clean HDMI signal. Now, that means that when you output via the HDMI port, it doesn't have all the kind of like information dotted around the screen. It's just the video image itself. If your camera has a micro HDMI port, and many, many, many do, do buy yourself a micro HDMI to standard HDMI cable, just a short one, because those ports break so, so easily. They're notorious for it. And ideally, if you can clamp that in, I've got a, a cage around my camera and a clamp, so that, that cable is permanently clamped in there, prevents and mitigates the need to keep pushing and pulling cables in and out of that port, which ultimately will give it a load of wear and tear, and it will just break. I used a reticulating arm that I screwed into the wall. I've actually got my cameras mounted to the wall and despite this, there is still enough clearance off to one side. 
Measuring the height of this is quite important. You're going to want to make sure that you've got enough room above the monitor to make kind of micro adjustments and get the camera set up in just the way that you want it. But it's not so high that it makes your stream look peculiar um, with you at a funny angle. Now you do want it slightly off to the side. That's that's fairly standard. That's going to sort of give that nice kind of perception of you playing the game rather than just it looking sort of straight onto you like this camera is at the moment. That's that's not really going to give the kind of co contrast between you and the game that you want. Um, drilling this into the wall, um, I'm in the UK, so typically we have drywall attached to bricks, so that makes that quite straightforward to do with some some raw plugs. But if you're in the US, you almost certainly got uh, a timber or drywall so you need to look for the timbers inside there, they're called studs, um, and you're gonna wanna screw your reticulating arm into that so it's got some strength. And once you've got this all set up, you've got it plugged in to your capture card. I actually chased my cables into the wall and made this quite a permanent fixture just to make it look nice. Um, you can actually then fiddle around in the software that you use for streaming. I use OBS. It's, open source, it's free, it's very high quality, no need to pay for something that is free. Um, and you're just gonna have a whole heap of adjustments on this thing that you haven't got on uh, on webcams. You can adjust the aperture size, which will help its low light performance and also help um, contrast between you and the foreground and the background. Um, it, the whole heap of kind of like, you know, ISO settings, um, shutter rate and, 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 and just a whole heap of flexibility but most importantly you're getting that bigger sensor size it's giving you better quality in your video not really too much else to say there guys this really is a relatively straightforward thing to do it's clearly orders of magnitude more expensive than just using a webcam but many many content creators have got a camera already they've got a capture card because they've been streaming uh, footage from their PlayStation or their Xbox. So actually for the cost of a couple of cables, a reticulating arm and a bit of elbow grease to get this thing screwed into the wall, you can up your stream quality substantially. So there we go, guys. That's how you turn any mirrorless or DSLR camera into a dedicated streaming, high quality webcam. Uh, I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are. As always, please like, share and subscribe and I will see you in my next one.